Uh, well, my stage name is Steve Ignorant, and I used to be a lead vocalist for a band called Crass, um, which started in 1977 and ended in 1984. In 2007, me and my uh, missus moved to Norfolk. So we discovered this place where we are now, which is called Sea Pauling. It's on the North Norfolk coast. And we'd been living here about six weeks. And uh, one of the guys who um, used to um, be a coxswain on the lifeboat worked in the local pub. And we were talking one night and he was saying, you should come down to the lifeboat. You know, we need new members. And I was like, no, no. And I was resisting and resisting because I thought it was going to be like a fire brigade where you have to stand to attention, you know, sort of do a parade thing. They took me out in the boat and threw me overboard and picked me up again and all this stuff. And I sort of saw what they did and I got interested and I thought, well, I'll, I'll just give it a go. Right, let's go. I'm not really a punk. I, I love music. I'm not really into punk music. And although I'd heard about a group called Crass, I'd never heard what they did or whatever. You take anyone at face value, or I do. He, he's an absolutely natural member of the crew. I am aware we have a punk rock legend, yep. <laughs> but I have to say, I'd heard of the band, I'd heard of Crass, but I hadn't, I had no idea who, who Steve actually was. No, he gets no special treatment down here, but uh, every time I go around my sister's house, my, uh, my sister's partner is a huge fan, so it's kind of like we refer to him as, as Gary's mate Steve in Sea Pauling. <laughs> it looks glamorous. Um, but, but certainly to me and I think to the rest of the crew, you know, it's not glamorous because if you do get a shout then it's terrifying because you don't know what you're going into. Well, the pager goes off and uh, you jump out of your skin and whatever you're doing you get down here as quickly as possible. As soon as that beeper goes, I don't know, everything stops. For a second. If I'm indoors watching on the buses or something on the telly and the pager goes, Yona, if she's there, gives me a lift in the car. And off we go. And we don't really talk at all. We just drive, tum tum tum, and there we are in front of the lifeboat. All right, see you later. Love you. Love you too. See you later. When Yona drops me off at the bottom, I always kiss her and tell her that I love her. And I just run up here. And, f and that's it, close my mind to it and just get on with what's got to be done. There's none of this thought of like, oh, what a hero I am or anything like that because you, it's really, really scary. We are all t a tight knit little community. Uh, there's no governor, there's no boss or anything like that. I'm not Steve Ignorant, I come down here, I'm just crew member number nine and I do what I'm, you know, what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Well, it, I mean, uh, the way that, um, you know, Crass and the other alternative punk bands, if I can put it that way, you know, or the DIY crew, it was a community-spirited thing. You know, you'd, you'd go to a gig and the, the audience would be to security, the audience would be the cleaners, you know, so it was all hands together. So there's, there's a similarity there between this. Plus, we're not um, a part of the um, RNLI at all. We're totally separate from that. We're independent. Uh, which means the only money we get is from donations. Yeah, I often think back to when I was screaming, Do they have us a living? You know, which was one of my songs, and, and I never ever dreamed, you know, in my wildest <laughs> dreams, that I would be, you know, um, number three on the boat, you know, helping to pull someone out of the water, you know, or just being out in the middle of the North Sea. You know, it's really bizarre. <laughs> but, you know, I can't stop doing it. <laughs>